Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will try to see about the another important concept in the angular signals. So that is nothing but untracked function. What is the use of this untracked function? So let's just try to understand about this briefly. In angular reactive system, signals are used to manage and track state changes efficiently. So this is the normal definition. So all the time I am trying to tell you. When working with signals, especially within the reactive functions like computed or effect, it is crucial to control which signal reads are tracked as dependencies. So here you, what I am trying to say is, for example, let's say that you are using the signals concept and signals means so those are reactive, reactive things. So whenever you are trying to use the signal values in the computed or effect thing, let's say that in your, in your computer or effect, you are using more than one signal. So that means it is dependent on more than one signal. So if you want to control the dependencies, that is very much important, right? So that is the thing I am trying to tell you. By default, reading a signals value within such functions establishes a dependency. So whenever you try to read a signals value within this computed or effect value, uh, effect, effect thing, it, it will make it as a dependency, causing the function to reevaluate whenever the signal changes. So that means, so whenever you are trying to use that particular signal value in your computed or affected function, Automatically, whenever the signal value changes, immediately that logic and everything will be re-evaluated. So that is what I want to tell you. However, there are scenarios where you might where you might want to read a signal without creating such a dependency. Sometimes, let's say that you are having four signal values are there in a computer property which is dependent on that one. If any of the signal value changes means then the computed value will be re-evaluated. That means there are that computed value is dependent on four signal values. Any one of the signal value change means it will it will try to execute. But I would, I want only that computer property to dependent on the two signal values only other two signal values. I want to omit it as a dependency. Then, so there are scenarios. So th these type of scenarios are also available, uh, will be existing that you want to read a signal without creating such a dependency. So you want to read a signal in the computed value, but that computer property should not be dependent on that signal value. This is where the untracked function becomes useful. That is one thing. So understanding this untracked thing. So what is this untracked function? So the untracked function in angular allows you to read a signals value without making it as a dependency of the current reactive context. So that means you can read the signal value in the computed or effect value, but whenever the signal value changes again, right? That particular signal value, if you use it in an untracked function, then that computed value will not be executed. So that means only one time. So that means you can able to read the signal value, but you cannot uh, execute it again when that signal value changes. This means that changes to the untracked signal won't trigger re-evaluation of the computed or effect function. This is particularly beneficial when you want to perform operations that should not react to certain signal changes. So I will try to show you some simple example how we can use this <coughs> untracked thing. So here we will be having something like a uh, let's say that we are having count okay which is equal to signal of signal of zero and we will be having another one is a name. So which is signal of, so I'll be having Leela, okay. So these are the two and what I want to do, I want to use a effect here inside this, I want to use an effect. Okay. Let's use the effect. Effect should be used in an injection context only. So in the constructor injection context, it will be available. So that's why I'm using it. So I want to use the console.log. Okay. So here I want to use count is, so I can use directly dollar of this dot count. I can use it like this and name is dollar of this dot name okay so these are the two things which i want to do it so now what i want to do it here so what i want to do it is so now i want to track it for example let's say that we are having an ng on init oh sorry ng on init and here i will be using a set timeout okay so here in this set timeout I will try to change the value. So this dot count dot update of value or otherwise set I will use it set of so three I will like update it. So whenever you try to update it after 3000 seconds it will update it. So when this one is finished so I want to write another set timeout. So here also I will try to update the uh, value there is nothing but this dot count not this time I will try to set the name dot set of so Alice or anything, whichever the name I want, I want to use it. So this timer should be executed after 6000 seconds. That means after three. So three seconds, this count will be executed. So the, we know that this effect is dependent on the two signal values. That is nothing but count and the name. 
So when the count is changed, it means immediately this effect will be executed. And also when this name is set, means this name is also dependent on this effect. Effect is dependent on the name. And again, this effect will be executed. Let's try to see the output for this one. So if you try to see the output for this one, so let me refresh this page and go to the inspect element. And here in this one, at the first time, this one is executed. And here you will be able to see at the second time, the count has been executed. And here the name has been changed again, this one also executed. So that means in this example, the effect will re-execute when, uh, whenever the count changes and also the name also changes, it will affect, it will execute it. But I don't want whenever this change, the, whenever what I want to do is whenever this name is changed, I don't want to execute this effect. So that means I need to keep this one in an untracked. Okay. Let's try to keep it as an untracked. So here I need to use the untracked. Okay. Untracked. So I will be using in the untracked, untracked of this dot name. That's it. So now if you try to use this untracked, so this should be imported from the untracked here. Untracked. That's it. Okay. So now if you try to check it here, so here this dot string is not assembled to parameter. Okay. Untracked. Let's try to see. So here we need to give it as an uh, function. So we should not use the value. Untracked takes the function as an output. Okay. It will take the uh, function as an output. So fine. So now whenever I try to refresh this page, so now here I will try to do the console so that you can able to understand it very easily. Mm, count triggered. Okay. And another time name triggered. So, so that you can able to understand it. So now when this effect will be executed, let's try to see it. So the first time the count is zero name is Lila. Okay, fine. So the count is triggered. That's why the effect is also executed. Now this time the name is triggered, but this time the effect is not executed. So in this example, if you try to see the effect will re-execute only when the count changes. The name signal is red using untracked. So changes to the name won't cause the effect to run again. That's it. That's the thing. So now you can check it in a, everywhere. So wherever you want to use it, so you can use it everywhere. This one. So now you need to understand that when to use this untracked thing. Okay. <clears throat> Avoid unnecessary recomputation. So whenever a computer signal or effect reads multiple signals, but you want to prevent certain signals from causing revaluations. So these places you should avoid it and external code execution when invoking external code within an effect that shouldn't be treated as dependency. For instance, logging services or third party libraries that read signals internally, then we can use this one. So now not only this one, so we can also use it in the effect also, how we can use this one in the effect. I will try to use it. For example, let's say that the total thing should not be effect, uh, should not be executed. Then what I can do, I can remove this, this one here. So I can remove for this one. So here I can use it as this dot name. And in this one, this dot effect. So here I can use it as an untracked. Okay. Untracked. And this takes the function. So that means whatever the logic it is there inside this one. So everything will be untracked. Now like this also you can use it. Now here, if you try to see the first time the count is executed. So now whenever the effect count triggered, it will not do it. Now the name also will be triggered. So, but the effect is not getting executed. So in this case, so the console.log, the untracked thing, which are console.log might read signals internally. So it, it may, it might read the signals internally, but by wrapping it with an untracked, we ensure that these reads don't cause effect to re-execute it again. So important consideration you need to understand is, so we need to use it with caution. Overusing untracked can lead to the code does, does not respond to the state changes as expected. Ensure that untracking is appropriate for your specific use case. Wrapping functions. The untracked function accepts a callback. Any signal reads within this callback won't be tracked as a dependency. So this is all about the untracked function in the effects thing. Hope you understood about this concept. So if you have any doubts or any suggestions, please post the comments below to this video. And if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.